I really felt like we could be over. You yeah, know? no, and, we were over. And what happened? Yeah, and then I got into an entanglement with August. That's what I said. An entanglement? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on everyone? Welcome to the Behavioral Arts and this week we're going to talk about the most requested video that you guys asked me to analyze in the comments. This is the Red Table discussion between Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith and I think this is a really great way to wrap up this whole Will Smith thing because we're seeing a lot of behaviors here, a lot of really interesting body language and a lot of things that explain what happened at the Oscars, a lot of correlation there. Really excited, let's dive right in. And at the end of the day, yeah. I don't like how all of this came to be, mm -hmm. but that doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It's a situation that I consider private. You just feel like it ain't really nobody, no, nobody's, nobody's business. business yeah. But yeah. But now black Twitter has <laughs> claimed it as their business. <laughs> and I know there's a lot of stuff going on in the world right now. Yeah. Even though this is minuscule, I do feel like it's these kinds of things that create the world that we're in. I want to start with Jada's hand gestures. So I've said previously on the channel that when fingers move, we see if they're going inwards or outwards. Inwards indicates stress because it's coming together. This is a sign of aggression, stress, anxiety. And when they relax, this is lower stress. But there's a point at which they go past that to what we call stop gestures. Notice how like when you're in the car with someone and they slam on the brakes, you might go <gasps> like this and all your fingers come out. Throughout this entire interview, this conversation, we see Jada doing a lot of this and she gestures like this. And the, this is even more stop gesture. It's like wax on, wax off. Wax on, right hand. Wax off, left hand. I think subconsciously, she, this is a response. This conversation is a response to a media leak. People were talking about it, so they decided to address it. But she doesn't want to be here. She doesn't want to talk about this. And we're seeing that in these gestures. Then she moves on to say that, you know, this is really minuscule. We're already seeing early signs of her distancing from the gravity here as to how big this is by calling it minuscule. We're just talking about it because, you know, it's, this is our reality. But that word, minuscule, is very telling of the distance, the psychological distance that she's trying to put between herself and this event. It's really not a big deal. On Will Smith's end, we're seeing one of the most important themes of this whole conversation and in general, Will Smith's demeanor. And it's when they talk about how it's nobody's business and he goes, but Twitter has made it their business with that bit of a smirk, that bit of sass, and they both laugh. This is Will Smith diffusing tension with humor. And this is what Will Smith does best. If you think about his career, think about his breakout roles, those earlier movies that he was in at the beginning of his career, we have things like Independence Day, Men in Black, Wild Wild West, and all those roles have one thing in common, and it's that he is the comic relief in a serious relationship. This is why a lot of people were blown away by his anger and his swearing at the Oscars when he yelled at Chris Rock. Because this is very uncharacteristic of him and I feel like a lot of people, that's where they clicked and went, oh no, wait a second, this isn't a bit because that's almost the opposite of Will Smith. Usually he's diffusing tension with humor. Okay, now let's look at their body language and see how comfortable they are in this conversation versus how stressed they are. And it's interesting for Will Smith because there's quite a bit on both sides. So let's start with Will. So throughout the entire interview, we see head tilting a lot. And head tilting is um, comfortable, but more importantly, not threatened. Because when we tilt our head like this, we're exposing our neck. And this is very essential to our survival. So when we do this, we're usually in the presence of someone that we're comfortable with. If we look at his hands, they're down between his legs very often. We also see him rubbing the leg quite often. This is pacifying, self-soothing gesture. We do this when we're stressed. And also, men tend to block their pelvic area when they're stressed as well. So I feel like above the table, he's trying to keep it together. He's got that head tilt. He's in motion. He's cracking the jokes. But under the table, we're seeing that stress. When it comes to Jada, this is a great lesson in how to gauge if someone is comfortable or stressed when they're sitting down. So here's a great sort of generalization I like to keep in mind. If you want to know how stressed someone is when they're sitting down, try to estimate how long it would take 
for them to get up and leave with all of their things. So this is something that I teach in interviews and interrogations. And so what does that mean? If we have someone sitting down and all their belongings are close to them, they're holding onto their purse, they're holding onto their jacket, their feet are planted on the ground, they're sitting more at the front of the chair, um, maybe one of their hands is on their legs or on their knees because we usually need that to get up. And it just looks like they could very easily get up and leave their exit checking, you know, their eyes keep going to the door. This is someone who's stressed and in their mind wants to leave this discussion. If we look at Jada, that is not someone who is ready to get up and leave. First of all, not only does she have her legs crossed, but they're crossed on top of the chair, like the way you would sit on the floor with your legs crossed. That is really difficult to get out of because first you have to uncross your legs, then you have to put them down on the ground, then you have to get up. She's also sitting pretty far back in the chair, so she's like sunk into the chair. So one of two things, either she actually is really comfortable and she, she, you know, she's here, she's comfortable in this interaction, despite not wanting to talk about this, she's comfortable in this setting with Will, or she's trying to fake comfort. She's like, I'm gonna sit like this because this really makes it clear that I'm comfortable and I'm okay talking about this. Let me know in the comments, which do you think it is? Is she actually comfortable or is that something that she's trying to convey? Okay, now we're gonna look at some more specific exchanges and look at what their words and gestures tell us about what's really going on in their minds. But before we do, do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button, turn those notifications on for more behavior analysis. It was about four and a half, four years ago. Mm -hmm. um, started a friendship with August. Mm -hmm. and we actually became really, really good friends. Mm -hmm. And it all started with him just needing some help, mm -hmm. you know, me wanting to help his health, his mental state. Because for me, that was the thing. When, I, when, um, when Aug first came around, he was, he was really, really sick. sick. He was really, you know? really sick, yeah. And the outpouring for him from our family was uh, initially about his health. Yeah. So I said earlier that one of the main things that Jada's trying to do in this conversation is distancing, putting distance between herself and her actions. But another thing is justification. And here, right in the beginning, we hear her say, we actually became really, really good friends. Not friends, not good friends, not really good friends, really, really good friends. This might be the best friend I ever had in my entire life. And that is a justification to say, this wasn't just anybody, you know, I didn't just, you know, fool around with anyone. This is someone that I was really, really good friends with. But as she says that, we see an eye block. So she closes her eyes, and this is a good amount of eye blocking as she says that, and she starts her sentence with, we actually became really, really good friends. Now, actually, sincerely, honestly, to tell you the truth, these are all things we pay attention to in verbal analysis, and they're called perception qualifiers. They're these little words that we throw in to be perceived as more honest. Now, some people do this a lot as part of baseline, whether they're being honest or not. Some people say, honestly, a lot as they speak, it's a habit. Jada doesn't. She says, honestly, I think one other place in this whole conversation that I saw, maybe two or three more, but it's not a habit for her. So for her to start by saying, we actually became really, really I block close friends, I think they weren't actually that close. And she's just saying that here to say, it's fine. We were really close and that's why I did this. Then she goes on to say that she wanted to help him with his health and that's why she did this. Can someone explain that to me? They're talking, look, I don't know the details of this, but they're talking about Will Smith says really, really sick. And I don't know what they mean by sick, if it's a mental or, or sort of emotional sick, fine, I get how maybe this could have helped him a little, but I feel like it's a little bit of a stretch for her to keep focusing on she was doing this for his health, to help him with that. I, I, I'm not quite sure what she means by that, but I feel like it's, again, justification and distancing. Like, no, no, I did this, I didn't do this for what you think, I did this to help this guy with his health as a really, really close friend. Then we kind of see Will Smith himself get confused about that, the same way I'm confused about it, because he goes, for me the thing is, you know, the outpouring from our family, and he puts focus on that from our family, not just you, from all of us. We were all trying to help him, and, he's, and Will's trying to figure out what happened between 
us trying to help him as a family to you committing this act with him. So I'm seeing a lot of confusion here, even from Will Smith in those words of saying, you know, you need to fill in this gap for me between us trying to help him and you doing this. And right at the end when he says, um, with his health, we see the eyebrows go up like this. This is a quick eyebrow flash. And I talk about eyebrow flash a lot on the channel. And when the eyebrows go up, it's one of three things. One is either a display of innocence, like when we go, I didn't do this. You know, we're showing, we have nothing to hide. Uh, second is seeking approval. You run into someone you know, you go, hey, how, how's it going? Eyebrows go up, we know each other. And the third is surprise, when we're surprised. And I think that's what we're seeing here. He's surprised by how this health that they were trying to help him with turned into this. He's stuck on this, he's confused, he's surprised, he wants answers. You and I were going through a very difficult time. Yeah. And we decided- I was done with your you, ass. Yeah, you kicked me to I the curb. I was done with you. Yeah. <laughs> At that particular point in time, it was indefinite. Yeah, I really felt like we could be over. You yeah, know? no, and we were over. That clip is actually very focused on Will and one line that he says that has so much depth to it, so many intents behind one sentence. And it's when he goes, I was done with your ass, I was done with you. That sentence actually has four psychological intentions behind it. The first one is, once again, diffusing the tension with humor. Again, we talked about how he does this, and this is a great example of that. Second, he is taking ownership of the breakup. He's saying, I was done with you. This was my decision. So this, we see this a lot in when couples break up to where someone goes, oh, who broke up? And they go, it was mutual, it wasn't mutual, you got dumped. So it's basically him just taking ownership of that decision. Third, he's taking ownership of his own pain because he's going, I decided this, which led to you doing that, which hurt me, but it's my fault. I started with that. And finally, he is saving his wife from prosecution. So by saying that, by sending that signal out, it's harder for us or anyone who's trying to comment on the situation to say that she did something wrong because he's taking that decision as the starting point of these chain of events. This moment, combined with a lot of similar moments in this interview, very effectively explains something that happened at the Oscars that confused the entire world. And it's after he slapped Chris Rock, he was walking away with a smile on his face. And th this is still, by the way, mind-blowing to me that I'm getting some comments of people going, oh, well, obviously this was staged because he's smiling as he's walking away. Like Will Smith can't hold back a smile. There's a lot of things in body language, like subconscious tells, that are really hard to fake or really hard to hold back. A smile isn't one of them. Even an untrained actor can hold back a smile if they're trying to sell this moment of aggression. So that, as much as some people think, is an indication that it was staged, it's actually an indication that it really was not. Because if you pay attention in this interview, every single time he throws out a line that is confrontational or aggressive, it is immediately followed with a joke, a laugh, or a smile. And it's that same smile from after the slap. Raised cheeks, tight lips. So it makes perfect sense that he'd be walking away from that with that smirk, because as I said earlier, this is what Will Smith does. He diffuses tension with humor. It's hard for him to not do that. Something really fascinating there at the end is the contrast and the confidence of their words. She's saying it was indefinite, like that is so final. But he's saying, I really felt like we could be over. Felt, could. That's not as high confidence as her. So he's going, you know, I'm, I'm not that sure. Like it felt like we could be over. And she's going, oh no, we were definitely over. It, what I did was justified because we were definitely over. We're also seeing while he's saying really felt like we could be over, two things. One, he says really through his teeth. His teeth are together, really felt. And that's not the first time he says something in this interview through the teeth. We're seeing that a few times throughout. And remember, anytime someone says something through their teeth or you see tension in the jaw, this is anger because it's the way we evolved back when we weren't very evolved at all. When we saw a threat, we'd show our teeth as a way to tell it, look, I have these sharp things, I'm not afraid to use them. So that stayed with us so that when we're angry or when we feel threatened, we clench the jaw. We also see at the exact same moment, both hands are in fists like this. This is not a very common thing when we're talking to someone. Remember digital flexion? Hands together, teeth together. I really felt 
like we could be over. He's angry about this. And I can't, I can never tell you if he's angry about the fact that it, it was over or it was going to be over or the fact that he's like, I really felt like it could be over, but it wasn't so final. So and there's anger around this. And then what did you do, Jada? Well, you know, I think from there, you know, as time went on, I got into a different kind of entanglement. I think so. I mean, because this is your red table and you like brought yourself to the red table. I think um, you need to say clearly what happened. As far as what? You and I decided we were going to take our space and what happened. Yeah. And then I got into an entanglement with August. That's what I said. An entanglement? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A relationship. Yes. It was a yeah. relationship. Absolutely. Let's make something really clear. This is an entanglement. This is an entanglement. Maybe even this is an entanglement. I'm not judging. It's not my business what they do in their marriage, but let's use the right words. It's not an entanglement. So this whole entanglement thing is a really, really great example of psychological distancing. Very often in criminal interrogations, guilty people will use words like hurt, touched, or took instead of, you know, attacked, murdered, or stole. We use lesser words to make what we did seem less bad. And this is such a great example because it's not even a lesser word, it's a wrong word. That's not what entanglement means. So we see Will in the beginning again with that line of questioning. He asks it twice in a row where he goes, you know, what did you do? She gives an answer and then that's not good enough for him. So he re-asks, he rewords the question to get an answer and both times we get this entanglement thing. The first time Will Smith asks the question, we see him look down as he says it. We see his body language sort of, you know, collapsing in a little bit as he asks, you know, what did you do, Jada? Almost like we ask a kid, what did you do? And it's like, what did you do? And his eyes are going down like he's not prepared for this answer. This answer hurts him. And despite that, we still see that smirk, that tight smirk, the same smirk he had when he was walking away from Chris Rock. And again, what a great example of how he throws this confrontational question and we see that smirk even when his confidence is um, collapsing. Then she says entanglement and he asks again, you know, you know, so, so let me ask this again. He makes it even clearer. And again, she uses entanglement. And at this point he goes entanglement. And we see that very clear and distinct moment where he eye blocks like this as he leans forward, like almost turning his ear a little bit. And we see one side of the mouth, a corner go up, which is contemptuous. So he's like, entanglement? Like, I'm not an idiot. What did you do? Give me the answer. So remember, eye blocking is like something we don't want to face. So we're seeing a bit of that eye blocking for a sec as he's sort of, and again, he's still smirking. Even if this is uncomfortable, even if it's confrontational, still that smirk. So, so it's astounding to me that anybody's still confused by that smirk after the slap. I feel like that husband, like I'm with you at the press conference. <laughs> I'm that husband. I'm with, now I got to be with you at the press conference <laughs> while you like to tell the world uh, about your transgressions. <laughs> well, like I love, I love my baby. I'm gonna stand by my baby no matter what. This is once again more of Will Smith being Will Smith, diffusing with humor. But as he says, press conference, we see his energy break away from this and turn towards where the cameras are because now he's thinking about his public reputation. And he doesn't do that too many times in this interview. So it's very telling that now he's thinking about the world as he thinks about, okay, now we got to go out in public to press conferences and I got to just stand there while you talk about, you know, how you're going to stand by me and try to explain your transgressions. And as he says transgressions, we're seeing a lot. First, we're seeing that contempt again, where we see one corner of the mouth go up. And remember, contempt is the only universal emotion that is not symmetric that we don't see the same thing on both sides of the face as we see that lip go up and he's saying transgressions and he's sort of spitting that out like that and we see face touching, one of the biggest signs of stress. So he's stressed about this idea of having to go out in public with her, more people trying to butt in, asking her questions about this and him just standing there, not being Will Smith, but being Jada's husband. He decided to break all communication with me, right. which was totally understandable. Right. Um, and I let that be and hadn't talked to him since. Oof, big justification, big distancing here. So Jada's talking about how 
uh, August decided to cut all communication. Again, we're seeing these stop gestures, which is a real theme in this whole interrogation, but you know, he, he stopped talking to me, um, which is totally understandable. Now look at her head when she says totally understandable. She's going like this. Throughout this interview, notice how in 90% of cases, when she's saying something positive, she's like this, and we're saying something negative, she's like this. It happens once or twice where we see a little bit of a like this for emphasis, but not like this, to where she's going, it's totally understandable. No, it's not. Now, this isn't always telling. Some people, myself included, emphasize with side gestures like this. Like, we'll say something like, this is really amazing. But it's more like, it's more like punchy. It's more like, bam, bam. It's not this back and forth fluid nod. I don't believe that she thinks that this is understandable. We have that stop gesture, eyes wide open, and she's going, which is totally understandable. And she's saying that because again, she's justifying this. She's saying, oh no, he didn't stop talking to me because like, you know, he was done with me and we weren't really that close. He stopped talking to me and it's really, really understandable. I really get it. It's not that bad. It's normal for him to have not continued to talk to me. There's a real power in the just knowing somebody's riding with you no matter what. Yeah. And you really can't know that. Until you go until through, some through some stuff, you know. I don't want to go through this no more. Yeah, no, I don't yeah. either. Yeah. I'm going to get you back first, and then... You're going to get me back. I think you've got me back. <laughs> I think you <laughs> I think we're good on that, okay? <laughs> okay, that might, that's probably true. That's you know, true. but... Um, and I don't think it's about getting anybody back. No, for me it is. Okay. Um, I'll give you that petty... <laughs> That's what you want. <laughs> that is the clip for me where we are seeing their true self come out the most. So he starts off by saying, you know, there's real power to knowing that someone's going to ride with you no matter what. And we see anger there. As he says, real power, again, he's talking through his teeth. This is anger. And I think it's basically him saying, we went through a lot of anger to get to this power. Like it's powerful, but this power was born through anger. And that's further emphasized when he says, I don't want to go through this no more. You know, like, there's, there's power here, we're good, we worked it out, and we might go through some stuff, but I don't want to go through this again. And she goes, yeah, me neither. So we're on the same page here, like, I won't be, it's basically I'm going, don't do this again. And she's going, no, no, I won't do this again. Then he says, I'm going to get you back. And classic Will, he laughs again right after he says that. And we see something really important with her. She says, you already got me back. And there's almost like this nervous sort of look on her face. But what's really important is what's happening under the table. We see her hand grab her shirt and kind of do this a couple of times. This is called ventilating. When we're stressed, the body temperature rises. And often we see gestures where we're trying to bring more air to cool down. So you might see men sort of stretch out their collar like this if they're wearing a dress shirt. You might see women push their hair out of the way to bring more air to their neck. You might see both men and women do this kind of thing. This is when we're stressed and we're just trying to adjust that. She is feeling stressed about this because she's trying to build this image where we're open and everything's okay and we've worked it out. But by him saying, I'm going to get you back, it shatters that illusion and goes, everything isn't okay. And that's why we see her kind of throwing these sideway glances to where the cameras are. And she's going like, no, no, you did get me back. <laughs> you totally, you totally got me back. And that's what we're seeing. In response to this, he says, that's probably true. And we see a lot of face touching, starting with the neck over here. Then he comes around like this, which is not only face touching, but neck blocking at the same time. And he's saying that's probably true. Not, yeah, that's true. I'm only kidding. Nothing like that. That's probably true. You know, with behavior analysis, very often I tell you guys, this is what it could be, this is what it could be. I rarely tell you I'm confident about something. I'm very confident that in that moment, he's not so sure that he's got her back. This is very sort of stress and high likelihood of deception. I don't think he believes that he has her back. Then she tries to once again psychologically distance by saying, I don't think it's about anyone getting anyone back. You know, she wants to go on to say like, it's more about us growing as a couple. That's what's important here. So trying to, you know, justify distance from her actions, but he shuts it down immediately and goes, no, 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 for me it is. She's basically going, this isn't about ego. And he's going, no, no, it is. You hurt my ego. And to that she responds, okay, well, you know, I'll give you that petty and then they bleep it out. And she's got this sass as her head is bobbing and she's looking down like you're being petty right now. She's trying to really send this signal that everything's okay here. You know, we've grown as a couple. It's not about egos. And he's going, no, 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 no. 
we, we, we haven't really gotten over this entirely and it is about ego and she's not taking that very well. You thought I was that that I didn't have the girth that it was going to take to ride with you didn't, through. Yeah, I didn't know if you would be willing to find the deep capacity to love me. Yeah. How am I doing? You're doing great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're awesome. I want to end with that clip without really going into anything too specific in what just happened, but more the, the general vibe of that last clip we just looked at and this entire interview. There's a giant focus on Jada, isn't there? You know, she's talking about her, her, her and what she did and what she thinks. Why? And you know, a lot of people in the comments have used about her the term narcissist. This is pretty narcissistic behavior because why is it that at no point did she stop from her narrative, from her justification and distancing to go, and how did you handle that? How did you feel about that? Have you gotten over that? Are you okay now? Is there anything I can do to sort of convince you that this is in the past? There's no focus on Will. And um, then he asks, how am I doing? You know, how am I doing? Why, again, why aren't we asking how she's doing, you know, to help get over this? And then at the end, we see a high five and they both immediately pull back and retract. Her hands come together and go down between her legs. This once again is blocking that pelvic area. When we're stressed, when we feel unconfident, we tend to put our hands down there because remember, all our reproductive organs and all our vital organs are exposed. So we do this to protect ourselves. So her hands are going down there like this and she's going, yeah, you're awesome. And listen to the way she's saying that. You guys let me know, I might be wrong about this. Are you sensing love? Are you sensing, like what, you're awesome. I say that to like people I don't really know. Why is there no warmth here? Why isn't there, I love you, thank you, thank you for being here with me. It's ending on such a sort of high five, first of all, they don't even get up and hug each other, high five, then pull back and they both sort of retreat into themselves. This to me is like the cherry on top of the Sunday that we're lacking togetherness in this whole thing. They're talking about how they work through some stuff but I don't think we're seeing that in their body language. So there it was, basically we're seeing two people, one of which is looking for answers and is still hurt, and the other one was trying to control the narrative into saying this was justified, it wasn't that bad, and guys, we're totally working through this, whereas the other one's going, I'm not so sure we're succeeding at that. And also I think we're seeing a lot of stuff here that justify, not justify, but explain what happened at the Oscars because it seems like Will has to take a lot of this blame. So when that opportunity came up to protect this and to say to the world, no, I will defend my wife, I will fight for her, he took that opportunity and something was triggered. I think a lot of that goes back to what we're seeing in this interaction. So there it was, I hope you enjoyed that. I thought there was some really good little bits in there. Uh, overall, a great video to analyze, to see the true intention of someone. Let me know what you guys thought and I will see you on the next one.